Hello, dear respected students. Uh, today's our lecture will belong to auscultation of organs of a healthy patient. Especially, especially we will focus on auscultation of lungs and heart. Uh, let's start from auscultation of lungs and uh, remember structure of respiratory system. Uh, you should remember from anatomy class upper airways and lower airway structure, grades of bronchi, and also structure of alveoli. There are two types of auscultation of lungs, direct and indirect. Uh, direct auscultation was uh, provided for a long time uh, before inventing the stethoscope and now daily we use indirect uh, auscultation. There are basic rules for auscultation of lungs. A room where the auscultation is performed should be quiet and warm. If possible, the patient takes an upright position if the condition permits. Uh, neck to the waist, uh, waist uh, the stethoscope is uh, pressed tightly against the chest and each point of auscultation, uh, two to three respiratory cycles are auscultated. There are two types of breathing sounds, physiological and pathological or adventitious uh, physiological physicular breathing and laryngotracheal breathing and adventitious breath sounds, wheezing, repeaters, plural fraction, friction, uh, noise and etc. Let's start from discussing physicular breathing. is a normal underlying respiratory sound that is heard over the lungs of a healthy person. Mechanisms of formation of physicular breathing is vibrations of the elastic wall of the alveoli most intense during inspiration. This is soft, gentle, blowing and continuous noise. Mm, this is uh, reminiscent of the sound F. Here is predominate uh, inhalation and uh, it will be hearable whole inspiratory phase and only one three part of expiration. The severity of or loudness of vesicular breathing in healthy people depends on airway patency status, the elasticity of the lung tissue, ability of the alveoli to quickly stretch and, uh, stretch and collapse, <coughs> intensity of ventilation of the lungs, the number of simultaneously functioning alveoli, the speed and volume of incoming air the state of the respiratory muscles, the ability to provide the power of the air flow, the thickness of chest wool, the development of the fat and muscle layers. Here is physiological variants of physical breathing um, uh, due to quantitative and qualitative changing. Quantitative changing uh, that it means increasing or enhancing intensification of sound vesicular breathing or weakening of uh, vesicular breathing. Qualitative changes, this is one of uh, type is saccadic breathing and also puerile breathing. Here is a um, picture you see a uh, normal vesicular breathing duration of inspiratory phase uh, longer than expiratory phase. A weakening of vesicular breathing, it means duration of both uh, parts it's decrease and enhanced vesicular breathing you see duration of inspiration uh, also uh, expiratory phase prolonged a uh, physiological weakening of vesicular breathing is observed uh, with the uh, patient who uh, has uh, excessive development of muscles or who has obesity uh, uh, which caused the thickening of the chest wall. Uh, also it may be hearable uh, um, shallow breathing at rest in sleeping people and at rest in athletes. Physiological enhancing or intensification of physicular breathing is uh, observed when in person with a thin chest wall mainly in asthenic type poorly developed muscles and uh, subcutaneous fat layer with hard physical work or psycho-emotional overstain. And always you should remember uh, this uh, physiological um, weakening and enhancing, enhancing uh, occurs simultaneously in the right and left halves of the chest, while breathing is the same in symmetrical areas. 
one of types uh, of uh, qualitative changes of physical breathing is saccadic breathing. It's for me it, uh, um, because of non simultaneous entry of air into different part of the lung tissue due to an even contraction of the respiratory muscles and um, it's characterized by uh, intermittent uh, um, inspiratory phase and uh, but exhalation is not changed in normal breathing I associated diffuse saccadic breathing um, for example a shivering or nervous tremor Puerile, puerile breathing, this is enhanced uh, vesicular breathing with a laryngotracheal shade and a ratio of inhalation and exhalation are equal. It may occur uh, in children till 7 years old. Uh, another type of physiological breathing, this is laryngotracheal breathing. Uh, laryngotracheal breathing, laryngotracheal breathing is a breathing noise that occur in the larynx and trachea during the passage of air through the glottis. Uh, this uh, occur due to turbulence of the airflow in the larynx and trachea. This is cause high frequency timbre exhalation predominates and normally laryngotracheal breathing above the surface of the chest is not heard only above the larynx and trachea. One of type of laryngotracheal breathing in normal normal bronchial breathing, which can be heard on the uh, on the main bronchitis on the trachea and main bronchitis. Also, you see duration of inspiratory phase less than duration of expiratory phase. Also, normal bronchial breathing uh, 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 hearable only uh, we have uh, only um, on place of bifurcation of trachea and uh, relocated bifurcation of trachea on the interior part this is on the level of Lewis angle. When performing auscultation in the lateral part of the chest patient's arm should be raised behind the head. When performing auscultation from behind the patient's uh, head should be slightly lowered arms crossed over the chest. Attention! During auscultation of the lungs, breathing sounds are compared during inspiration. Their nature, duration and loudness are assessed at symmetrical points of the chest. That's why we call this comparative auscultation of lungs. If you remember comparative percussion of lungs, uh, we use the same points to auscultation. Always we should keep sequences of auscultation. Uh, like uh, auscultation, uh, like percussion of lungs. Do you remember the percussion started from anterior area and go to the uh, lateral part and go to the back side? The same with the auscultation. Always we should uh, auscultate in anterior part. Don't forget about the apexes, supraclavicular fossas, uh, and then we go space by space, uh, and also we are ignoring ignoring the. Uh, heart uh, part and auscultate the area uh, which is free from the heart and compare and then go to the lateral part auscultation here is point of lateral part and sequence of auscultation from behind and you see uh, points of auscultation there are there are uh, there are similar with points of percussion of lungs to assess the main respiratory sounds, auscultation is performed with calm breathing of the patient through the nose. In the presence of pathological breathing, for example, crackles or uh, pleural rap or uh, uh, crepitus, special techniques are used to clarify the nature of the sound. In this occasion, we use or we can ask the patient to breathe deeply through his mouth, listen to breathing against the background of forced inhalation and exhalation after coughing we again can check lying on his side or bed uh, pressing the stethoscope more tightly or we can ask imitate inhalation and etc 
Changing of physical or breathing in the pathology. Quantitative changing may be enhancing of physical or respiration or intensification of physical, sorry, physical or respiration and weakening of physical or breathing. Qualitative changing is may occur, or it may cause hard breathing, uh, physical or breathing with prolonged expiration and saccadic breathing. Let's discuss one by one. Pathological weakening of physical or respiration may occur in hydrothorax condition. You see, hydrothorax condition, accumulation of fluid in pleural cavity. Uh, uh, also, um, in closed pneumothorax, uh, in complete obstructive ethylectasis, and lower pneumonia stages first and third uh, stages of bronchopneumonia. Uh, maybe. Um, Diffuse attenuation, pulmonary emphysema, swelling of the alveoli wall, interstitial stage of pulmonary edema, and left heart failure, left side heart failure. Extra pulmonary causes severe general asthenia of the patient, dysfunction of respiratory muscles, for example, myasthenia gravis, myopathy, paralysis of the diaphragm muscles, diaphragmitis, and etc. Thickening of the chest wall, pronounced obesity. Um, widespread subcutaneous emphysema, edema of the subcutaneous tissue, ankylosis of the costal vertebral joint and ankylosis spondylitis, chest traumas, myositis, uh, refractures, intercostal neuralgias, and high standing of the diaphragm in obesity or in patient who has ascites. All these extrapulmonary causes can limit the um, limited the expansion of um, lungs during breathing and diminish the sounds. Pathological enhancing or intensification of vesicular breathing. Um, uh, unchanged lung tissue under hyperventilation condition. Uh, over healthy areas located next to the pathologically altered in Diseases of the lung and pleura increases physical respiration in more often vicarious. Vicarious, it's detected on the healthy side. This is compensatory enhancing of ventilation. When, on the other hand, the lung does not function sufficiently. Excessive pulmonary infiltration, exudative pleurisy, uh, and pneumothorax, for example, here presented um, increasing. Uh, here presented consolidation of lung tissue due to, for example, pneumonia and uh, side of consolidating, uh, switching off from the breathing process. That's why uh, surrounding tissue uh, try to compensate on that part, whereas, uh, um, uh, whereas we have uh, uh, vicarious or uh, uh, trying a compensatory increasing of or enhancing of vesicular breathing. Pathological bronchial breathing, we, you remember pathological or the physiological bronchial breathing uh, occurred only on uh, on the part of bifurcation of bronchi, whereas pathological bronchial breathing uh, may, uh, may uh, uh, formated in uh, case of massive consolidation of lung tissue, uh, lower pneumonia stages, uh, in complete uh, compression ethylectasis and uh, this is cause high frequency tone uh, mechanisms is conduction of laryngotracheal breathing noise to the chest uh, in uh, consolidation phase you show consolidated tissue uh, may cause the uh, may cause very um, easily going the sounds, uh, providing the sounds through the chest. That's why we have whole, uh, it will be hearable, whole inspiratory phase and prolongation of expiratory phase. Quantitative changes of bronchial breathing, there are types, amphoric breathing, one of uh, type of uh, bronchial breathing, uh, accused when there is a large cavity, 5 to 6 centimeters in size, communicating with the bron bronchus through a narrow slide which creates ideal condition for resonance and the formation of uh, overtone. This sound can be easily um, simulated by blowing over the neck of an empty uh, decant decanter or bottle. Uh, here is also, you see, duration of inspiratory and expiratory phase. 
Another type of bronchial breathing, this is metallic breathing, metallic breathing uh, differs from bronchial and um, emphatic by even higher timbre of sound, it's louder and resembles the sound of a blown metal, metal accused in rare cases when pneumothorax communicates through an opening in the visceral pleura with a sufficiently large bronchi. Causes is open pneumothorax, large cavity with tight wool. And you see here pneumothorax, pneumothorax air, presenting of air in pleural cavity. Also, stenotic breathing uh, is a variant of bronchial breathing that is heard over areas of narrowing of the larynx and trachea. And this cause the inhalation is intermittent from severe, several phases, exhalation is continuous causes is swelling, edema, foreign body of the larynx and trachea. There are other abnormal lung sounds like crackles, wheezes, raunches, trigger, pleural friction, rub. And you see uh, adventitious or additional breath sounds. There are wheezing, for example, dry wheezing. Uh, wheezing uh, will be hearable whole inspiratory, expiratory phases and accompanied inspiration and expiration. Wet rails, um, also rails also can uh, can accompany it inspiratory or, or as much as expiratory phase. Crepitus only uh, will be heard on the top of inspiratory phase and plural friction rub. Let's discuss dry wheezing mechanisms of formation of dry wheezing and even narrowing of lumen of the bronchi. It may be uh, caused by edema, spasm or viscous secretion. Wet rails, the formation of bubbles when air passes through a liquid secretion, for example through the transudate or exudate or blood located in the lumen of the bronchi uh, of or cavity. There are three types of wet rails, large bubble, medium bubble and fine bubbly uh, wet rails. Crepitus, uh, this is stretching the wall of inflamed alveoli on inspiration, conducting a small amount of viscous secretion, transudate, exudate blood. The main condition for the occurrence of crepitus is the uh, accumulation of inflammatory exudate on the inner wall wheels of the alveoli, which happens in the initial and final stages of the development of uh, crupose pneumonia with pulmonary tuberculosis with infiltration pneumonia. Other causes of uh, um, crepitus may be left heart failure uh, because of uh, accumulation of um, exudate and we have edematic, edematic alveoli wheel during the um, inspiratory phase uh, we have uh, audibly opened and this is the audibly opening audibility opening uh, we see on that or uh, we can hear on the top of uh, inspiration this is we know as a crepitus sound first and third stages of pneumonia or maybe in left heart failure situation plural friction are up uh, friction against each other of the rough surface of the altered pleura. Pleural friction no uh, noise or rub is often accompanied by pain in the localization area. This is uh, uh, this sound uh, below, uh, may occur in dry pleuritis. Next is heart auscultation. There are several rules of heart auscultation. In different position we have to auscultate uh, our patients in standing, lying on the side, uh, when holding your breath after exhalation, at rest and after exercises and uh, in order of decreasing frequency of damage. There are uh, points of valves, we know we have four valves and uh, we have also four points to auscultation and one point is additional or herbs point. Let's start from uh, mitral valve, mitral area of uh, um, apex. This is fifth intercostal uh, space which cross by midclavicular line. Um, this is position of apex speed. Tricuspid valve uh, area, this fourth left intercostal space 
uh, or left lower sternal body in our country we call this uh, on the base of the void process uh, aortic area and uh, on the second um, intercostal space right side uh, of sternum pulmonic area on the second intercostal space left side of sternum and also herbs point this is third uh, or third left intercostal space this is additional point to ascultase aorta and uh, you know this is ascultation points they are different from the real projection of valves uh, mm, and uh, real projection of valves uh, presented in this picture uh, mitral valve uh, is to the left of the sternum in the region of attachment of the third rib uh, right um, um, av tricuspid valve is on the sternum in the middle of the distance between the place of attached to the sternum of the cartilage of the third rib on left side and the cartilage of the fifth rib on the right side pulmonary valve um, projected in the second intercostal space left, uh, left uh, of the sternum and aortic valve is located in the middle of the sternum at the level of cartilage of the third rib you see a, pro a real projection of valves in one part but a sculpted point in different part for example mitral valve uh, pre uh, present uh, on the uh, third uh, rib uh, cartilage cartilage but as contained on the apex because of uh, blood flow go to the uh, go to the apex of heart and uh, clearly hearable on the apex and uh, for example aortic valve located also on the third rib but uh, we are sculpted on the second intercostal space right side because uh, this blood flow goes to the arch of aorta uh, distinctive features of S1 and S2 the place of the best listening at attitude to heart pulse and connection with apical impulse connection with the pulse of the keratic arteries there are two sounds uh, normally lapped up in S1 S2 and uh, we should assess that during the auscultation assess the rhythm intensity timbre duration and splitting sounds and uh, let's remember uh, heart a circle and in this circle you see uh, first we have filling of our ventricles and then blood goes to the main vessels to the aorta and pulmonary artery and during after filling of our ventricles we have closing of AV valves the mitral and tricuspid valves and after uh, going out the blood due after systole we have closing of the semilunar valves uh, aorta and pulmonary artery and you should remember that our tone tones or sounds formatted only during closing of uh, this valve uh, opening always occur silent s1 systolic sound is produced by closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve and uh, early systole and is louded near the apex of the heart it's a high frequency sound best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope also mitral closure usually proceeds uh, uh, proceeds tricuspid closer they are separated by only about 0.01 seconds such that the human ear uh, uh, appreciate only a single sound lap sound s2 tap sound results from the close of the aortic and pulmonic valves and therefore has aortic and pulmonic uh, components unlike s1 uh, which is usually heard as a single sound the component of s2 vary uh, with the respiratory cycle they are normally first as uh, one sound during expiration but become uh, audibly uh, audibly separated during inspiration this situation termed normal or physiological splitting sound here as you see during expiration and during inspiratory phase you see uh, splitting of aortic and pulmonary components s3 occurs in early diastole following the opening of the atrioventricular valves during the ventricular rapid filling phase a third heart sound is normal uh, finding in children and young adults or in um, pregnant women 
S3 sound also diastolic sound. S4 is late diastole uh, and um, coincide with the contraction of the atria. Like an S3, the S4 is a dull, low pitch sound and is the best heard with the bell of the stethoscope. A volume of S1 sound or audibility of S1 sound depends on uh, the depends on tightness of AV valves closer during uh, isovolumetric contraction of the creation of the tightness of the ventricular chamber from the speed uh, of ventricular contraction, uh, volume overload, and mass of hard muscles and pressure overload. Volume of S2 or audibility of S2 sound depends on the tightness of closure of the semilunar valves of the aorta and pulmonary artery, on the speed of closing and um, acceleration of the semilu acceleration of semilunar valves of the aorta and pulmonary artery, which depends on the level of blood pressure in the great vessels and rate of relaxation of the ventricular myocardium. And here you see S1 sound uh, and uh, S1 sound, this is systolic sound, which occur at the beginning of systole. Diastolic, when, uh, diastolic phase is uh, longer than systolic phase. And uh, uh, we have three sounds, S2, uh, S3 and S4 occurs in, during diastolic phase. Again, please remember S1 formated during closing of um, mitral and tricuspid valves, S2 uh, due to closing of aortic and pulmonary artery, and S3 due to rapid filling of ventricles, and S4, the sound formated due to uh, contraction of atriums. Changing in heart sounds uh, at loudness, loud or soft, uh, and uh, timbre, flopping, metallic, splitting and additional heart sounds. S1 weakening uh, may be caused by extra or, uh, extraordinary causes or intra-heart causes or intra-cardiac -cardi causes. Extraordinary causes, excessive development of subcutaneous fat or chest muscles, emphysema of the lungs, accumulation of fluid in the left pleural cavity, other processes that move the heart away from the interior chest wall cause weakening of S1 or lap sound. Weakening of both tones or S1 and S2 uh, may uh, caused by decreasing contractibility of the heart muscle in patients with myocarditis, myocardial dystrophy, cardiomyopathies, any causes which cause uh, weakening of heart muscle. Uh, it may occur in acute myocardial infarction or accumulation of fluid in the pericardial cavity. Weakening of the S1 sound and the apex of heart on the projection of mitral valve uh, Caused by mitral valve insufficiency, volume overload uh, in aortic regurgitation, pressure overload in aortic uh, arterial hypertension, uh, decreased contract uh, contractibility uh, or conductibility, sorry, of the left ventricle or AV blockages, S2 S1 sound weakening at the xiphoid process and the, at the point of uh, auscultation point of tricuspid valve. Uh, co uh, caused by tricuspid valve failure, volume overload, and uh, pressure overload also. Next is intensification of S1 sound. Uh, there are also two types, uh, extraordinary and intra, uh, uh, intra cardiac causes. Extraordinary causes improving the condition of the conducting of sound, for example, it may occur and patient who has thin chest and uh, uh, wrinkling of the edge of the lungs, uh, approaching the heart to the interior uh, chest wall due to the development of a tumor in the posterior mediastinum, resonance uh, when large air cavities are located near the left ventricle because of large pulmonary cavity, large gas bubble on the s of the stomach. Uh, because of composition of blood flowing through the heart uh, with a decrease in blood viscosity as in observed in, uh, in anemia um, 
uh, the sonority of tones intra heart causes intensification of bo both tones uh, may uh, influenced by uh, increasing sympathetic activation of heart for, for example in heart physical work uh, excitement uh, or for example patient who has grave disease uh, due to increasing metabolic rate an increase s1 at the apex of the heart is observed with a degree uh, with a decrease in the filling of the left ventricles with blood during diastole uh, for example uh, uh, for example, um, mitral stenosis in mitral stenosis we have decreasing feeling of left side and in intensification of S1 sound at the apex. And uh, uh, intensification of S1 sound at the xiphoid process may be caused by stenosis of tricuspid valve. A weakening and intensification of S2 sound. S2 sound over the aorta uh, a weakening uh, may be caused by insufficiency of the aortic valve, aortic regurgitation, uh, significant, uh, significant reduction of blood pressure, weakening of S2 sound above the pulmonary artery <coughs> caused by <coughs> insufficiency of pulmonary valve, pulmonary valve regurgitation and decreased pressure in pulmonary artery. Intensification of S2 sound above the aorta or we call it as accent uh, caused by increasing aortic pressure, for example, arterial hypertension, any causes of arterial hypertension. Uh, intensification of S2 sound over the pulmonary artery, also be called accent, increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation, blood overflow, uh, or uh, any causes which cause increasing pressure in pulmonary artery like um, lung disorders. Splitting sound, uh, uh, splitting, splitting is simultaneous closing of AV valves, or maybe physiological splitting of uh, uh, S1 sound during a very deep inhalation or exhalation, and pathological uh, viola um, violation of intraventricular conduction, for example, uh, hypertrophy, myocardial infarction, and etc. Splitting of S2 sound uh, may be physiological splitting and pathological splitting of S2. Physiological splitting, we already discussed, this depends on the phase of respiratory circle and normally on inhalation, the right semilunar valve closed later. Pathological splitting of S2 sound, legging pulmonary valve slamming with the increase in pressure in the pulmonary circulation with emphysema, mitral stenosis, and etc. Legging contraction of the ventricles in patients with bundle bl branch blockages, mitral valve insufficiency with severe regurgitation, atrial septal defect, paradoxical splitting of the second tone may occur in aortic stenosis, blockages of uh, left bundle bl branch blockages, and um, congestive heart failure. And uh, last is heart murmurs. There are extracardial and intracardial murmurs. By the phase of the cardiac circle, uh, we recognize systolic and diastolic uh, murmurs. By the presence uh, of change in the structures of the heart, organic and functional, organic may be connected with valvular uh, uh, stenosis and insufficiency muscles, dilation of the cardiac cavities and expansion of the valve ring in myocardial dystrophy, cardiomyopathies, and functional uh, high speed, uh, increased blood speed because of increasing blood speed due to thyrotoxicosis, fever, nervous excitement, anemic decreased blood viscosity, and dystonic increased papillary muscle tone. Extracardial, pericardial, cardiopulmonary, and pleurocardial extracardial murmurs. During auscultation, it's necessary to determine the ratio of noise to the phase of the cardiac circle. Noise properties or murmurs properties, strength, duration, timbre, and the place of best listening and also uh, direction of noise conduction, where conducted it may conduct to the direction of uh, uh, carotid artery or to the direction of apex and etc. And here are several types of 
hot moments which uh, we will discuss in uh, um, topics in future topics when we will discuss the syndromes like um, heart valvular disorders uh, stenosis or regurgitations thank you for your attention